It is not for nothing that planet Earth is called an ideal location for the life of human beings. As soon as we even slightly rise above its surface or leave the hospitable embrace of our own celestial body for a while, laws and theories begin to play various tricks, not always pleasant and sometimes completely incomprehensible. Especially, it becomes noticeable if the object is accelerated to inconceivable speeds. Take at least the general and special theories of relativity, a royal gift to the world from Albert Einstein. They are associated with a number of paradoxes extremely difficult to realize because the conclusions proclaimed on the basis of experiments contradict the concepts accepted in classical physics and completely collapse the air castles of intuition. At the same time, in essence, they are absolutely true and natural. Hello. Albert Einstein is probably the most famous theoretical physicist on the planet. Not only Stowe and OTO belong to him, but also the quantum theory of photo effect and heat capacity. It was he who first described an exotic aggregate state of matter, Bose-Einstein condensate, and publicly announced Brownian motion. Thanks to Einstein, we are seriously thinking about quantum teleportation and other effects that are difficult to reproduce, even at the current level of technological development. What to speak of the era when the German genius was creating? Truly, this man was born in the wrong time. But enough preface. More carefully consider the two most popular paradoxes caused to life special and general theories of relativity. The first of them, the paradox of twins. Unfortunately, the experiment at this stage can be done only mentally. The essence of it is that one of the twins is an astronaut who is sent into distant space at a speed still impossible in practice, more than 90% of the speed of light. All this time, the other brother remains on the surface of the Earth. Question, which of the twins will be younger by the time the traveler returns to his home planet, or will their ages remain the same? This paradox involves the postulates of the special theory of relativity, which states that from the point of view of a static observer, the processes of moving objects are slowing down, but the equality of inertial reference systems is not cancelled. The contradiction is actually based on the mentioned statement. Logically, if we look from the point of view of the twin left at home, the astronaut's time should be slowed down, so his watch will inevitably lag behind. On the other hand, the traveler, viewing the situation from his bell tower, well, or the space shuttle, realizes that the Earth is not standing still either, but is moving in concert with the homebody's clock. This means that the chronometer must be lagging behind the brother left on the planet. But from the point of view of the third outside observer, the relatives are absolutely equal, i.e. the clocks will show the same time for both of them. So who is right? And here the right turns out to be the special theory of relativity, saying that if we do not take into account the gravity of the Earth, it is the traveler's watch will lag behind. Let's look at the question in more detail. For example, the twin A goes to the star X, located at a distance of 20 light years. The speed of the shuttle, 0.9 of light. Under these conditions, the astronaut will reach the star in just over 22 years, if you believe his watch. After that, the ship will turn around and head back. Once the shuttle lands, the youthful and trim twin brother will be greeted by a decrepit old man who has waited for his relative for more than a century. But why not 44 years? There is no paradox yet. It's just that when traveling close to the speed of light, the effect of time dilation comes into force. The faster you move, the slower your clock goes. So by the standards of an earthly observer, 103 years have passed because the astronaut's time has slowed down considerably and, according to the formula, 44 years should be multiplied by a coefficient of about 2.3. Now remember what we talked about at the beginning, right? 
about different points of view, and the astronaut has one too. In his opinion, as we have already mentioned, his homebody brother is not static at all, because the planet is in constant motion. So it is the astronaut who should have aged, not the other way around. How to solve the stalemate? In fact, everything is not so difficult. You need to start from the world lines of twins, and they are quite different. If the homebody rests relative to one inertial system, the astronaut does not just make a movement at a constant speed. He periodically experiences the effect of acceleration, for example, when braking near a star and turning back. It is the difference in physical conditions that resolves the apparent paradox. Thus, an accurate calculation demonstrates the obvious fact. The twin who is stationary relative to the planet will be older, since no acceleration and other effects he has not felt during this time. In favor of this evidence should be added that in modern gas pedals, particles moving at near light speeds live much longer than those at rest. In addition, there are a lot of experiments comparing the indicators of chronometers on airplanes and on the surface of the Earth, demonstrating insignificant but still different data. In short, this paradox has been dealt with, let's move on. Now we come to the Lorentzian contraction of lengths, generating even more surprising mishaps, one of which is called, like Krylov's fable, the rod and the hanger. Imagine that you are standing and watching a 10 meter long metal rod flying by at a very high speed. Ahead of you stands a six meter long hanger. Attention, question, can the circumstances be such that the rod completely disappears in the hangar? Here it is worth remembering that theory is accompanied by the concept of relativity for a reason. In this case, the law saying that simultaneity is relative applies. What does this mean in practice? Again, let us turn to disparate observers. A static person in a hangar is at some point guaranteed to see a flying rod occupying the room completely. From the point of view of the observer riding the rod, it is the rod that is stationary, while the hangar is flying towards it at breakneck speed. This is just nonsense, isn't it? Was Einstein a lunatic and not a genius? Oh no, although genius and madness often go side by side. But that's not what we're talking about now. When we talk about the length of any object, it means that we have a signal coming to us from both ends of it at the same time. And yes, if the observer is inside the hangar, these events in his frame of reference do indeed occur simultaneously. But such a vision is not the same for the one riding the rod. In his frame of reference, first one end of the object will coincide with the right door of the shed, and then, sometime later, the same thing happens to the left end of the shed, or vice versa. It is important to realize that these events will never be simultaneous from the rider's perspective. In short, to make a long story short, too much of the theory of relativity is based precisely on the observer's perspective, and the final conclusions depend on it. You may be indignant. Why are we engaging in the hagiography of twins and hangers when real life passes for abstruse theories? Here you are mistaken. There are a lot of examples when GR and STO change our worldview. For example, a person sees gold honey yellow precisely because of the effects generated by the theory of relativity because the metal atoms, because of the huge speed of electrons, begin to massively absorb the blue hue. Bottom line, your pendant looks gorgeous gold. Even mercury is liquid precisely because of the change in the diameter of electron orbits. Provoked by the theory of relativity, the atoms are simply unable to create stable bonds. The result is the increased fluidity of the metal. And the last striking example is electricity and satellite navigation systems. In GPS navigators, relativistic errors are necessarily taken into account 
otherwise airplane crashes and geolocation failures would be ordinary phenomena of our everyday life. As for electricity, the basic principle behind transformers is a relativistic effect called magnetism. So don't think that the theory of relativity doesn't concern us at all. Without its effects, human life would not be what it is today. Perhaps you know more such examples from real life. Then go to the comments and along the way, give the video a big thumbs up. This is exactly what moves the channel forward. If we can get 1000 likes together, I will immediately release a mega exciting video that is already in the editing stage. I know you can. We have succeeded many times. Subscriber remember, every one of your likes is a way to quickly release the episodes.